welcome back guys and today we're looking at renal pharmacology that is the study of drugs that deal with the renal system now before that we'll have to look at the function of the renal system renal system has many functions okay mainly which deal with excretion uh, so the renal system is also called the excretory system of the body but to a lesser extent they are involved with blood formation renin angiotensin mechanism and to a certain extent hormone production if you bypass all that the drugs which we use on the renal system mainly aim at the excretory process of the renal system now what are the functions of excretion excretion mainly aims at waste removal but to a certain extent it helps in balance also balance of ph balance of volume and balance of ions yes but the drugs which we are using on the renal system mainly act on the volume maintenance because for ionic balance, we can directly supply ions like sodium or potassium or calcium or chlorine directly by oral route or parenteral route. And for maintenance of pH, we have agents like sodium bicarbonate, magnesium sulfate, aluminium hydroxide, which are called antacids. And for acidity, we can use vitamin C to make the body pH more acidic okay so the renal drugs mainly act on volume yes now how are the drugs acting on the renal system classified so we'll come into classification now depending upon what they are doing that is the function they can be classified as diuretics that is the drugs which aim at increasing the diuresis that is increasing the urine output or antidiuretics that is the drugs which aim at reducing the urine flow now depending upon which part they act do they act on the salts present in our body or do they act on the fluid they can be further classified now the drugs acting on salts are carbonic anhydrase inhibitors loop diuretics thiazide diuretics and we also have osmotic diuretics now the drugs which are acting on fluid are also osmotic diuretics then we have adh agonists and EDH antagonists also okay now antidiuretic example antidiuretic hormone and the diuretic example all of the salt ones can be taken as the example for diuretics yes now we are going to continue by giving examples to those things now example for Carbonic anhydrase inhibitors, acetazole amide, loop diuretics, torosemide, and furosemide, thiazide diuretics, hydrochlorothiazide. ADH agonists, desmopressin, ADH antagonists, we have spirno, lactone, uh, am I miss? yes, osmotic diuretics, you have mannitol, and isosorbide 
Isosorboid is not the isosorboid mononitrate or dinitrate which we use in case of angina. Isosorboid. And yeah, I think I forgot this. Please add this. Potassium sparing diuretics. Okay. Uh, potassium sparing diuretics mainly prevent potassium from being excreted. So, spironolactone is also one of the example. And another important thing would be amyloride. Yes. Okay. Now, in the salt part, we have over. So, I think this is the classification. Now, coming to the normal functioning of the nephron, let's draw nephron. This is the glomerulus. Then we have a proximal convolution. So this is the PCT. Then there is a loop. So the loop of Henle. And then the distal convolution. So that would become the DCT. Uh, the DCT. And then finally the collecting duct. First, let's understand the functioning. Yes. So, here in the glomerulus, the filtration depends upon the BP and the volume of blood which is present. Now, in the PCT, there is reabsorption of sodium chloride, bicarbonate ions, and water. So, in PCT, reabsorption of sodium chloride, bicarbonate and water occurs. Loop of Henle, there is only reabsorption of water, okay, in the downward part and in the upward part, that is the thick ascending loop of Henle, there is reabsorption of potassium, calcium, magnesium sodium and chloride okay in the dct reabsorption of sodium chloride occurs and finally in the collecting duct mainly potassium and acid ions that is h plus ions and nacl so when we are going to talk about the drugs which are going to act on this particular sites it will be easier to remember that only few components of the nephron deal with their particular respective ions okay so if i were to say that potassium sparing diuretics were to act over here okay potassium sparing diuretics were to act over here then you need to understand that collecting ducts are responsible for potassium and sodium exchange which is the last step yes and if i were to say that loop diuretics are responsible for depletion of magnesium and calcium ions then you can see that the loop of henle is what's responsible for exchange of calcium and magnesium ions yes so this is the importance of this diagram by knowing at which places which ions are getting reabsorbed or excreted depending on this we can say which drug are going to act on which compartment and why okay so most of the drugs which we are using are going to act on the luminal side okay that is inside the nephron lumen except spironolactone because this being a steroid analog is going to act inside the cells so it's not going to act on the luminal side so one of the point which would be you know good to remember now depending upon the classification okay let's say this is the class of drugs we have can carbonic anhydrase inhibitors we have loop diuretics we have thiazide diuretics we have potassium sparing diuretics and 
if we were to look at the excretion of the respective ions okay if we were to talk about that so let's consider nacl potassium ions bicarbonate ions and the ph of the body okay these three are urine contents okay so we are going to talk about their excretion excretion and here the ph of the body now in case of carbonic anhydrous inhibitors they mainly deal with excretion of bicarbonate ions which are going to increase highly and there are going there is going to be potassium excretion in all class of diuretics except potassium sparing diuretics okay sodium chloride excretion will be present in all of them because that is the main component of urine but it's going to be very very high in loop diuretics and moderately high in case of thiazide diuretics since loop diuretics are heavy excretors of nacl they are also called high ceiling diuretics we'll get to that point when we explain this separately okay bicarbonate excretion is not seen in case of loop diuretics or potassium sparing diuretics but it is seen in case of thiazide diuretics so the point to remember would be there is decretion of potassium ions excretion in case of potassium sparing diuretics there is no excretion of bicarbonate ions in case of potassium sparing diuretics and loop diuretics and there is high amount of excretion of bicarbonate ion in case of carbonic anhydrous inhibitors if we were to talk about the body ph we are going to see acidosis and acidosis in carbonic anhydrous inhibitors and potassium sparing diuretics and we are going to see alkalosis and alkalosis in case of loop and thiazide diuretics okay so this was introduction and in the second part we are going to continue with carbon